All right, guys, so we kind of went through the, the little sample cards for the Metamorphic Rock, uh, yeah, the Metamorphic Black series with, uh, with Daniel Smith. And so now I want to take the sample card that I've got left over here, and I kind of want to just play with it and do a little landscape. I'm just going to do something. I don't have a lot of pigment left on this, so I'm going to do a little something that's a little bit smaller, but I want to just kind of play with it, do it a, an intuitive little landscape, and you can just, you can just follow along. You know, I had mentioned that that, you know, the, the, I covered up the colors and I can't see the names, but uh, one of the, you know, the bluish one, it just really, it really does look kind of like stormy clouds or something, you know, so I thought about maybe just coming in here and I've just got a little horizon line and maybe I've just got some heavy clouds that are sort of weighing, weighing over the, over the horizon line here and looking kind of ominous and but I've still got maybe I don't know maybe it's sort of like this little valley or something that I'm this kind of vista that I'm looking out over and let's see what we come up with here I'm just kind of making this up as I go so so I've kind of got a foreground a middle ground that my distant horizon line and then that nice ominous you know cloud line that's that's out there in the back so so let's just kind of play with this a little bit so I'm using my bigger brush to just kind of really go come in here and kind of hit things pretty you know pretty big so I'm just going to wet my whole sky area this is just some clear water and I'm bringing it all the way down to the horizon line my my distant line out there it was the Sodalite Genuine that really kind of had that bluish tone. I had mentioned it kind of seeming like, I don't know, kind of like, you know, storm clouds. And I thought, oh, that'll be perfect. So I'm just going to kind of come in here with it. You know, I've got this big, heavy, kind of weighty storm cloud just hanging out there. And remember, when we've kind of gone over some of these things before, you've got that shadow on the underside of the of the clouds. You want to make sure you're kind of keeping up with that. And then, you know, based on my experience with my sample cards, I know that uh, that I can come in here and really kind of displace a little bit and push some of that value back. Lots of nice dispersion. And I think I'll even use my, my little rigger brush. This is kind of a tiny painting. There's not a lot of pigment here to work with once, my, once I've kind of finished my samples, but I want to kind of create this idea that there's some striation in the cloud, that there's a billowing happening here. Nice and wet. Wet on wet there. And then I'm just kind of doing a little bit of water across the horizon line to kind of encourage and bring that water up to the pigment. Remember we talked about how it can behave differently and that dispersion is sort of pulling the pigment down it almost looks makes it look like it's raining maybe off in the distance or something like that all right so I'm going to get into my um, this was I want to call it rare green earth but it's not it's the zoazite genuine okay it's kind of similar to that so I do have this really distant line of trees happening way out there and I can just use that I know that the you know I already know ahead of time because I did the work with my sample cards I know that I'm going to get that dispersion and if I place it just right I can really encourage that movement up and it almost looks like little tiny trees are taking off um, out there in the distance a little bit of 
water to, in fact, I'll switch over to my, my little dagger brush. I just need a little bit bigger to get right under that line just to pull that down. And not only is it pulling it down, it's also softening that value to really help encourage that to look like it's even farther off out there in the distance. Now, I might have to cheat just a little bit. I do want a little bit of color in here. I didn't want this to be completely monochromatic. Uh, so I am gonna get a little bit of my green gold out here. Just a little bit of my green gold. And I kinda want to introduce that like it's sort of out here, like there's a little bit of landscape, there's grassiness out here a little bit, and there was just not enough green in, in these four colors alone to sort of give me that, that color that I wanted. Um, I'm also getting a little bit of my serpentine green, just a little bit, and I can actually take the serpentine green just got a little bit on my brush um, getting that out here you can see the two different colors of green that I've got but I can then kind of get a little bit of this blue this bluish gray and kind of mix it in with some of these greens to get a little bit darker green look what a nice green it'll give me and then I've got some trees here this, um, yeah, the, I can't remember, the zoazite, I, I just about have used it up, but I've got some trees right here in my foreground, and then there's a few little ones that are, I kind of envisioned right over here. You can start to see my little, my little world kind of show up here. All right, now I'm gonna get into these blacks. This was the this was the, the hematite, the one that had this really, really heavy sediments. Um, now it's bold, you know, so I'm kind of thinking that because it's gonna give me a lot, of, a lot more intense, heavy visual texture, I will try to maybe incorporate that toward the front, you know, into the foreground, just because if it's gonna give me some large, heavy textures, I probably need to make sure that that's taking place up here in the foreground. And then this last pigment, the um, yeah, the black tourmaline, it was very similar in value, but not not quite as heavy with the with the pigment, uh, or excuse me, with the, the little uh, particulates. I've got a little drop of water there. It looks like. So I'm just keeping these, it's dark, so I'm just keeping it low. I don't want to, you know, over, I want to mind my scale here. And then I think that just because I need a little extra color here, I'm getting some of my, this was already had all this green on my, on my brush, but I went and got a little bit of my sienna, my Quinn sienna, just to kind of warm that up a little bit more in the foreground. And I think I might do one extra little cheat uh, with my, my sky. I'm going to get into my um, neutral tint here just a little bit because it doesn't granulate at all and with my clouds I'm okay with having some granulation there but it's kind of nice to uh, have a little bit of smooth tone I mean they are meant to be very ethereal and atmospheric and they're you know hundreds of uh, thousands of feet away and so I don't want to know, or I don't want to kind of see too much visual texture in my clouds, but I'm just kind of reinforcing some of my dark areas 
with a little bit of that neutral tint. See how it gave me just a little bit more coverage, a little bit more coverage. The, uh, the granulation is fantastic for visual texture and we definitely want you know, a good bit of that. I'm even going to get, what am I getting here? This is a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of cobalt blue to kind of cool off the tops of some of these clouds. I still have lots and lots of um, visual texture going on here, which is really kind of nice. I'm going to get a little bit more of it just because I've got it. I really like that. I don't want to kind of upset that anymore, but I want to come in here and really reinforce some of these really dark areas in my in my cloud. It's a really dark storm storm cloud. Super fun. Oh my goodness. And it's just amazing what you can accomplish with so few colors, a very limited color palette. I mean, basically I'm using gray and green, you know, bluish grays and some green. And it's just wonderful. I'm going to come back with a little bit of water just to kind of encourage a little softness right in there. in my foreground, because my painting's so tight, I want to kind of control where the salt goes. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of salt right in the, right in the foreground. Just right down here in the front. I don't want to get back too much. I had some of my green sort of scoot and, um, you know, take off back there in the, into the background, and, and um, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm definitely not going to go in there and try to mess with that. I think I might um, take a little bit of my, this is that zoazite that does kind of look like the rare green earth. I might come back in here and just reinforce a little bit of that distant tree line back there. You notice I'm not making just a, a line, I'm just kind of coming in here and just adding little bits here and there just to kind of reinforce that that is back there. All right, okay, so let's dry that. Oh my goodness, look how that performed uh, with the clouds there. I just wanted to kind of dry that sky area just a little bit. I want this little foreground tree to have a little more oomph. So I'm just getting actually into some of that darker blue. I keep calling it dark blue. It's not dark blue. It's uh, Sodalite Genuine. And I'm just coming in here. The tree is slightly damp, but it's not really. And I'm just chasing values. We've talked about that, especially when we did our little tree series. I'm looking for all the places that are already a little bit dark to kind of come in and just do a little reinforcing. Really want that tree to look like it's just popping out right here in the foreground. Just adding a little bit of water for softening, blending, keeping tiny little marks. drying that. Okay, just wonderful. Out of these four colors, plus the, you know, the, I did add the, the little green gold in there, but uh, just fantastic at what you can accomplish with just so few colors. A limited color palette is such a beautiful way to, to test your, test your knowledge, test your skill, and and really fun to work with right after you have done, you know, some sample cards. Just use those, you know, two or three, maybe four colors 
just to see what you can come up with. A beautiful little painting, and I absolutely just love the um, all that visual texture. Everything that you see that just looks like pepper that's been sprinkled, all that black peppery, little speckly granulation, all of that is that hematite. Uh, and I'm very pleased with the way that the clouds turned out. Um, you know, there was a lot of granulation in here, and during the drying process, um, I don't know, it may have been just sort of a combination with the, uh, um, you know, putting some of the neutral tint in there, but uh, I'm just very, very pleased with the way that that turned out. That might be something that I definitely add to my color palette, the, the Sodalite Genuine. Um, fantastic, beautiful, gorgeous color.